laughing. <laughs> yeah, because it was a, we're not used to seeing an accordion in a regular band or in a musical thing. Like, <laughs> My grandma's music? <laughs> accordion? I don't know. Musical instrument? Where you watch? Music. Uh, music. Accordion? Steve Urkel? <laughs> Keys? I don't know. Piano. Music? Mexicans. Uh, I think uh, Louisiana and the Cajuns, they have those really cool accordions that they play. Polka music. Well, she just said it for me, I guess. <laughs> Accordion? Accordion. Accordion. I don't know, squeeze box. Beautiful music. Well, the player, but right now I can't think of his name. Who was it? I don't know. <laughs> Accordion. Accordion. I don't know. Accordion. Accordion. I don't know the exact word. Hello, my name is Paul Pasquale, uh, founder and creator of the Las Vegas International Accordion Convention. We meet here in Las Vegas once a year, the third Sunday of June, and usually try to have as many accordion legends as possible from around the world to entertain you. During the event this year, we will have Myron Florin, Dick Contino, Art Van Dam. Uh, over 40 workshops will be offered and classes. As far as the convention is concerned here, we started the convention with about 200 people. We've grown every year. Uh, we have more vendors. In fact, this year we have actually Italian manufacturers that have traveled all the way from Italy, which really says something because I think this is unique, the first time in a, probably almost American history to pull that many manufacturers here into America. It's saying that the accordion still is alive. The accordion is vibrant. Uh, it's perhaps not like it was in the 1950s, but we have almost 500 conventioners here playing the accordion. So we are alive. <laughs> Vice President of the National Accordion Organization of the United Kingdom and I co-organized the event with Paul. I'm European and UK agent for it and from the beginning we've seen a great difference from the very first uh, convention we had, so many different ideas we've had and uh, our aim is really to promote the instrument particularly to the new generation, to the youngsters and have our youngsters appreciate the accordion like our people are appreciating it here at the convention this year as they have done in previous years. Our hope is that when they come and we organize workshops that the workshops really help them and that they go home with a very good feeling about having spent a few days and time in a workshop and hope, hopefully they go home with a very good feeling of well-being as far as that's concerned. Uh, we all get together, it's very friendly, uh, people have returned year after year, uh, we're going on to our fifth convention now in Las Vegas next year and uh, we're looking for the same um, support as we've had for the last four years. This is my second year on the scholarship, 2003. Last year I was on the scholarship because I won, but then Paul invited me back on my second scholarship and I really thank him for that. Now I've been playing accordion for three years, but before that I played piano for um, three years also. The uh, DL Scholarship Award 
is to any young recipient who has shown pride, talent for the youth, as not a lot of youth today pick up accordionmanship. And this award is like in thank you honor for, for that purpose and in hopes of continuing whatever effort that youngster has done to promote uh, the liking for accordion or anything related to the accordion. That, um, and uh, so if you know a young accordionist that would love to come and attend, please get in touch with us so we can have We'd, we just want to promote the accordion with the youth here. So. Uh, we had Brian uh, Wong that appeared last year in the scholarship, and he's returned stronger. Strong, aren't you, Brian? And we have Daniel, who has been um, only playing the accordion for just over two years. that you've been playing the show. Of course, everyone has told you this is a great talent, and uh, I wish you also a great career, and uh, I'm very proud and pleased to give you this award. Thank you. I congratulate you on winning this award. You have great talent, and uh, I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful future. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Castiglione, the Castiglione Accordion Company in Warren, Michigan. We have an 8,200 square foot facility with 5,500 5, square feet of all of accordions. And we have 600 accordions in stock and we've been in business 70 years. And um, we ship accordions to Japan and Israel, Aruba, Brazil, Argentina, uh, Australia. I'm just shipping some to Finland this week and uh, another one to Scotland also. I'm having a great time. <laughs> why did you come? Um, to see the accordionist play, um, check out all the merchandise, get some music. I can't ever find any accordion music um, in any stores, so I'm gonna get as much music as I can and uh, and have a great time. Uh, I've been playing for about 13 months, and I like playing traditional music, mainly Irish music, and uh, I'm working on some classical and some other stuff too. Everyone that sees me playing will come up to me and uh, seem really interested in learning to play. They just don't know where to go, I guess, to get lessons or so. Oh, you hear this? A train. 56 Chevy station wagon. Union Pacific diesel engine. Boeing 720B. Boeing 720B flat. And we're gathered here at the International Accordion Convention featuring the top accordionists of the world, including Myron Florin, Art Van Dam, Dick Contino. Uh, Don't forget Joe Vento. <laughs> Joe Vento, <laughs> yours truly, and uh, also Harry Gave uh, from uh, Stockton, California. And in fact, here is uh, Myron, right over here. Myron, so nice yeah. to have you. And Thank have you. you. Finally, you made it here. Thank you. Me too. And uh, we're looking forward to tonight's plan here. Thank you. And uh, Pete Caroni was my uh, mentor long years ago. Yeah, he used to watch him when he was a little guy. He used to come and watch him play the accordion. That's right, yeah, many years ago. And Harry, why don't you say a few words, would you please? Well, you know, lately, for the last few years, the accordion has been uh, not the most popular instrument in the world. But this gentleman right here has kept it alive. And the rest of us are working really hard to try and bring it back and, and it's coming and uh, it will be back in its glory days and it's really a gorgeous instrument. And you know what? 
to have these three gentlemen together in this room. Bunch of old guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think it's wonderful they're all here. <laughs> This was a demonstration done by one of the world's foremost accordionists today, a 22-year-old Mario Stefano Pietro Darchi. Very, very fine accordionist, and he has uh, more control. The thing on the accordion is just like diaphragm when you're when a trumpet player or a reed or a wind instrument. It, the, the control is with the diaphragm. The diaphragm on the accordion is the basses, the uh, bellows rather, excuse me, uh, getting it uh, uh, controlled. It's just like the bow of the violin. This is the most important thing in playing an accordion. Fingering is fi very important, but it's secondary to the bass, the uh, bellows. You need to okay. Questi gli mantici sono i punti più importanti di suonare Sicuro. con i reti, Sicuro. perché i reti non è un problema. Sì. Questo è l'anima della fisarmonica. This is the, the soul of the accordion. That is correct. You see? That's the first thing that Magnanti taught me and, and, and also when he was rolling the fingers, when he's, I call it, gluing the notes together. Instead of, when you're doing legato, you're going like this. Before you before you raise your finger to play the next note, you play the next note, then you release the finger. Fala un legato, per favore, most of them. You see what he's doing? Before he raises, before he raises the first finger, the subsequent finger is pushing down, then he's releasing the finger. And that's very, very important. That's phrasing. With è un suono caldo. Sì. Asciò, caldo, caldo. Uh, warm, it's a warm sound. Yes. Sì. So, uh, what, dove, che parte dell'Italia? What part of Italy do you tell yes, us? Yes, uh, io vivo al centro Italia, in direzione di Roma, ma sul mare Adriatico, sul mare Adriatico. He's closer to Pescara. Pescara, he's closer, he's in central Italy, uh, but closer to the Adriatic coast, where Ancona, where these cordians are made, Pigini. Sì. Italian accordion. Italian are the best, <laughs> naturally. But, um, will you want to say hello to hello everybody in Americano? But say hello. Hi, yes, hello uh, my friends. I am happy that you are here. And um, uh, this evening I will play. I hope that uh, uh, all is okay. And uh, ciao. <laughs> and you know what? He's going to demonstrate it. He speaks more with his plan, and that will tell it all. And you're going to hear. You're going to hear it tonight. Just very, very good. Impeccable. Grazie. Grazie a lei, John. Grazie. A Grazie. Lei. Ciao.
talked to Paul a few years ago we did, it, we he had already instituted the Dero scholarships which I thought were very very nice in, in memory of Guido and Pietro Dero and I thought well I'm trying to promote my father and get him recognized again why don't we uh, and he was such a great entertainer and so why didn't we come up with an award that was based not only on your technical excellence with the with the piano accordion but also or any accordion for that matter it didn't matter whether you were a professional or an amateur but uh, also your showmanship, and which uh, your way that you present the instrument to people because I think that our future depends on young people being able to project this kind of uh, warmth and uh, become a person instead of the accordion playing them, they are playing the accordion, and we need that kind of identification with our entertainers and our young people who are going into the entertainment field to, uh, to ensure the life of the accordion. Gina. Would you please announce his name? Mario Stefano Pietro Dacchi. I think that we're looking at the first accordionist who's going to be successfully imitated by people because his mannerisms, uh, the eccentric, eccentric mannerisms that he has, the way before he begins to play the instrument, the adjustment of the body, you know. I mean, he is going to be imitated. Everybody will know, ah, I know who that is, Mario Stefano, right away, you know. But on top of that, his exquisite technique, staccato fingering, uh, command technically and uh, emotionally of the instrument, the fact that he is into the instrument, you know, he is lost, we don't even follow him. I got a headache trying to follow pieces, I mean, they were that difficult. He knew where he was going. And when you play something that's even in the more popular idiom, you drove us crazy. It was beautiful. The Italian waltz that you played was absolutely outstanding. And so therefore, you're a great accordionist. With accordions, this is precisely how it works. Father and the young boy go to the accordion school, this great edifice of learning. And they walk in and the father says, this here's my kid. I want to get him going on accordion. I was wondering what it costs to get him going, you know? And the professor, in a very professorly manner, says, well, the lad can start off on a $10 accordion. And the father's in disbelief, says, 10 bucks for accordion? <laughs> I never heard it. You could play a $10 accordion. With that, the professor picks up that instrument and he plays. They buy the instrument. After studying for an entire year, the child returns playing. So the father, disappointed, goes back and he says, yo, professor, what's wrong? The kid don't got it or what? And the professor says, I'll tell you what's wrong. Your boy is limited because of his instrument. If you were to buy him this $300 cordine, he'd be able to play a lot better. And the father says, wait a minute, 300 zords for a cordine? I don't know, man. You think the kid could play one like that? And the professor says, are you kidding, my good man? Picks up that instrument and plays it. They buy that instrument. After studying for another year, the child returns. Playing, you guessed it. Now the father is so angered, he's beside himself. He goes back and he says, yo, professor, 
And the professor says, who's the other guy? Looks just like you. He says, that's me. I'm beside myself. <laughs> you better start laughing at some of these because I have some worse crap than this and I'm telling it. <laughs> worse than artichokes too. He says, 300 hogs for the cordine and the kid don't got nothing. What's wrong? And the professor says, I'll tell you what's wrong. Your boy has lost his enthusiasm. Why don't you buy him this $2,000 accordion? It's got his name in rhinestones and palm trees on the bellows. <laughs> hey, remember that? And the father says, 2,000 brogues for a cordine. I don't think nobody could play one like that. With that, the professor picks up that instrument and plays. <laughs> and the irony is the only song the professor knows is. <laughs> yeah, the professor can't even play. <laughs> Uh, hello, ciao. I am Renzo Ruggeri, jazz player. I play, I come from Italy. I play same accordion. It's a new brand, but it's not really new. We built many other uh, brands in the past. Now, uh, I work with them. Uh, I stay uh, in uh, Las Vegas for, uh, uh, for uh, do a concert Tuesday. And uh, I develop a new product for Sam, a new uh, electronic accordion, and uh, we present here. Portugal, from uh, the, in the center of the country, a city called Cantanhede, near Coimbra, so in the south of Porto, in the north of Lisbon. Um, it's very good for me coming to, to the United States, it's my first time in the United States, and, and obviously in, in Las Vegas. Uh, I think, and I hope to, to, go, to go to Portugal with uh, many, many accordion friends, and with, uh, with some uh, new knowledge. My English is very bad. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Well, I play a chromatic accordion. Uh, 
I, I play, I always have uh, Italian accordions. Uh, I play with Armando Bugari. Uh, I like uh, I like jazz, but I don't play jazz. I play French music. Uh, I like folk Portuguese music and, and ethnic music. Howdy, I'm Jenny Mack and I'm 17 years old from Fort Worth, Texas. That's my hometown, been born and raised there. Um, last year I came to the convention, just kinda, you know, I applied for the, the Diero scholarship and you know was accepted and it was such an honor I was so excited I mean for months I just planned oh you know I'm going to Vegas and I'm gonna be at the convention it was really a great time um, I was honored to be able to perform you know and I, I went up there and and I just did what I did which I do Texas music Western swing and country um, I, I like a lot of different kinds of music but um Count Guido Diero <laughs> came on stage and he just congratulated me and said I'd like to present you with with this award and it, it was one that it wasn't supposed to be given out until next year they're going to announce that this award would be given next year and it was for a, a showmanship award you know in honor of of Count Guido Diero so sponsored by him and it was just so exciting you know and I was thrilled I didn't expect that at all and um, so many wonderful accordion players out there who, um, and there's a lot of youth out there, you know, I've, I've met a lot at these conventions, so many more youth are coming, um, you know, or organizations like this, they're giving scholarships to the youth, and I think that's wonderful, it's the perfect way to promote it, um, and it's so wonderful to see the kids doing their own thing with it, and especially for these, these folks that are pros, you know, these top dogs, and they're wanting to encourage the youth, you know, they're wanting to give of their knowledge and help us because one day we'll be passing it on to other people and other generations. So it's, I think it's going to thrive on that encouragement.
He's tender and he's loyal, a cowboy of the soil. Well, I tell you, he's got class and he's got charm. I'm a living and I'm a loving this life I've been a want. Man, I stop for cowboys. Oh, and with a smile, he could melt any gal. He's the answer to why and when and how. He's the reason why I dream. He's the moon that I adore. And the cowboy that we've all been waiting for. So if you've settled on a mission and your heart is just a wishing to find you one so honest and so true, you bet that you start a region for the skies. You ain't never gonna have one otherwise. Man, I stop for cowboys. Oh, and I bet you stop for cowboys. Ah! For those of you who aren't accordion players, every time you go see an accordion player, you see him hitting these things like this, that nothing is happening, trust me. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing is hooked up inside here, you know. Sure, out in Henderson, a bunch of garage doors are opening and closing. My name's Giovanni Ablett. I'm from Norwich, Norfolk, in England. I've come to Las Vegas to attend the accordion convention. I came here a few years back to see the concerto because I'd heard so much about the concerto and I wanted to hear it and see it and play it. Uh, and that's the reason I've come here. I've met lots of people and they're all very friendly and it's nice to sort of meet people who've got a, a common interest. <laughs> something absolutely incredible. Uh, it's amazing to be able to have, I believe, close to 500 people together for three days sharing so many things. And right now we have uh, the great opportunity to be able to attend Art Van Am's rehearsal for the lunch. So that's actually why we're here. A little spoiled. Well, in Europe, uh, first, uh, the culture is very different. The American culture and the uh, European culture is more or less, I mean, I'm aware of the French culture. It's a totally different, different vision of everything. I mean, it's not only related to music, it's related to anything. Feelings between people, it's related to food, to wine, to all those, you know, things of life. And of course, music is part of that. And then, in music, you have the accordion, and the accordion so is going to have a different use in, both, in the different countries. In France, it's regarded as one of the national instruments, just like any other instrument, because it's such 
it's it's like printed in everyone's mind that it's part of the, the French culture. A lot of singers, most of them, the famous ones, have been using it as a, as a, as a tool to promote the French sound. So it's always there, no matter what. Over here in America, it doesn't seem like it really had that chance. I guess uh, you have, you guys have jazz. We have musette and French music. You guys have rock and roll. You know, you came in. With Elvis Presley and all those people, which it's wonderful, it's just different culture and concept. So the, the accordion, uh, I guess, due, due to those facts, doesn't, you know, didn't survive the same way. For us in France, it'll never die. In America, it seems to be in these years, I mean, it's coming back a little bit in, in like folkish type stuff, like Zydeco, uh, Tex-Mex, and uh, Cajun, which are wonderful styles, polkas are always there, and it's great. It's regarded as a the accordion is a folk instrument and it's regarded as this country so many people came from different horizons that it actually in the America is such a big country it's diff it's difficult to say oh it's dying or it's it's not as it used to be of course it's it never will be as what it used to be but you know that's why we're here we get together we try to to think about those ideas share share our opinions with different people and basically uh, I do believe that the accordion is gonna, in America, it's got its own place and it's there. It's just a different culture. International Accordion Convention. We're across the street from the International Accordion Convention and showing uh, some of the German-built, Austrian-built products. And uh, we have even a few, a few Italian-built accordions here as well. between a German accordion and an Italian accordion is basically a German accordion is less money. <laughs> All the handmade reeds, hand-tuned reeds, um, highest quality, very, very quick action, the tightest bellow on the market. Check this out. There's a lot of new technology that's gone into the bellow here. You can see not only leather but also a neoprene material which is perfectly airtight, wears better than leather, and you can see does not leak any air. <laughs> pull anymore. Okay, there we go. Check this out. Wow. <laughs> okay, but your arms aren't that long. <laughs> no, my arms aren't that long, but it's not the point that my arms that long. It's the point that it's not leaking air. The accordion is the technology that's gone with the accordion now. I, I'm very much uh, a fan of the MIDI uh, concept of accordions, and if you want to play and make your instrument sound like a complete band, which for some gigs is, is very important, essential to be able to make them sound like a big band, whatever uh, MIDI is essential for an accordion player today. I had a gig at a, a dancing club in Norwich and as I set my accordion up they said uh, you'll be no good for this, this gig because you haven't even got a drummer 
and uh, no one can dance all night to an accordion and I said well you haven't heard my accordion yet and when I opened up with the big band number that was that was it everyone got on the floor and we were booked there once a month right throughout the year and we've done that now for about two years. Involved in electronics, yeah, always, uh, always, uh, and now it's going to MIDI, and then it's going to pass that into digital. Yeah, digital, uh, digital acoustic now with the concerto. Um, but it's but, still on the call. But if we if we talk about the the way that it's going, then I have to say that electronic has always been a professional's choice if they are wanting to have a large sound wanting to get paid somewhat more money uh, because obviously the larger your sound the more money you get paid because you're doing the job of two or three people and uh, electronics has always been the choice of the professionals for that reason I think if everybody sort of goes inside themselves they say well there's nothing more beautiful than picking up a normal acoustic accordion um, but electronics are very exciting right now particularly when they are as sophisticated as the digital accordion is there's a there's a great joy in playing it and of course I, I must say it does help to get the youngsters involved because they're very into MIDI very into computers uh, via the MIDI they can load stuff onto computers it's a, it, for them it's an attraction and they were saying well you know we're as up-to-date as anything you want to touch why don't you play the accordion and I think it helps and it will help in the future to, to drag the children towards the instrument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. There's yes. no dump, but it, uh, but, but yeah. no, that you gotta do. From now on, I'll start recording. I use this accordion, and it saved me a lot of money getting the paint of orchestra. That's right. Okay, here we've got a choir. Here we've got guitar with strings. In the left hand, we have the melody. <laughs>
program and nothing, understand? This is the guitar with the strings. There's an interest in accordions, and of course a lot of the younger people with the electronics adds another dimension that wasn't there before. And so now they no longer become obsolete, they can connect to uh, any device that has sounds to it via MIDI. And uh, now there's even, we have uh, wireless as well. And so, uh, you know, you have these trends that are continuing uh, to go, and uh, um, I, I'd say the future is up, per se as opposed to years ago where it was all just accordion bands. Now it's greatly more diverse than in the past. you put an accordion on. Hey, accordion, you're too much, man. You're terrific. <laughs> That's putting your accordion on. You want to see me put the accordion down? Hey, man, you're from Utah, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 